Hi, and good afternoon. Thank you for joining the Nebraska Tourism Commission's webinar, Educational on Marketing Today. How did I do there? So we're going to start today by talking about low-cost educational and opportunities for marketing that we've recently been talking about to help you promote your business. And some of those that we're going to be covering today are regional marketing opportunities and partnership ideas, as well as Nebraska Nice Destination Radio, volunteer opportunities for upcoming events that you can promote your destination site and area, and how to participate in the Tourism Commission's First Friday activities, kicking off for the first time ever this week, becoming a Nebraska Passport Stop in 2016, and how to claim your destination listing at visitnebraska.com. What's very important about that last sentence is how to claim your destination listing for visitnebraska.com is that today, August 3rd is the deadline to claim your destination in order for it to be placed in the 2016 travel guides, both spring and summer and fall and winter. With me today is Rich Clausen, and I'm Kathy McKillop with Nebraska Tourism Commission. We're going to get started on the marketing concept. Rich. Great. Thank you, Kathy. Well, there are a number of regional marketing opportunities and partnership ideas, as Kathy said, that we're going to share with you today, and really it begins was something that we introduced earlier in the spring, but it's worth uh, remembering and, and revisiting. And uh, the first of these, and, and, I'm, and I will say that both of these uh, media kits that we'll be uh, briefly going through are available uh, for view uh, after the webinar at uh, the website visitnebraska.com. Just simply click on the industry uh, link at the bottom of the page and it'll take you to uh, the, me uh, the media kit link. So the first is uh, the co-op advertising opportunities for uh, 2016. And uh, we'll go through these uh, fairly briefly, but uh, just to give you an overview, we have uh, a number of opportunities that are national, regional, and local exposure. Uh, they include lifestyle magazines, uh, history and, and hobby magazines, uh, leisure travel magazines, uh, and then uh, also online uh, opportunities as well. So, and not just traditional print, but also online opportunities uh, through Madden Media, and uh, and a newspaper opportunity uh, with uh, uh, some newspaper inserts, and uh, as well as the Nebraska uh, Nice uh, Radio uh, National Program on Sirius XM uh, Destination Radio Channel 80 which we'll talk about here in just a, a minute. But uh, it's real simple and easy to, uh, to follow. The deadlines are all on the, uh, the media kit, and uh, you simply just need to fill out uh, the insertion order indicating what you would like to participate in, and uh, we will uh, we'll get you set up and uh, make sure that your materials are received uh, for messaging, and uh, you'll, you'll get terrific exposure. Rich, a question on the co-op advertising opportunities. Every year we analyze which ones we work with and how that selection process occurs. I know that last year there's some surprises for this year's, some that had a really good response. So how do we stick with one over another and what is the state's role in providing the leveraging for these opportunities? Well, we'll start with the last thing first in, in terms of what can the state leverage. And really what the state offers is to any of these advertising entities is uh, access and a, uh, uh, the ability uh, to market to an entire industry within the state. Uh, collectively, uh, through the co-op uh, monies that Nebraska Tourism Commission allocates for this program, combine that with the monies that an advertiser would pay, really presents a great opportunity for any of these media outlets to put together what they believe is the best opportunity and the best package uh, for our industry partners. We evaluate based on a couple of factors. One is uh, the participation level. So if a, uh, um, if a media opportunity has had great participation and they've sold out their spots that are available for uh, that co-op, uh, we, we take that into consideration. And then we balance that against uh, the cost. So our people aggressively negotiate and try and get the absolute best deal possible uh, for Nebraska uh, tourism industry partners so that uh, we have a, uh, a cost uh, analysis, a cost per thousand in terms of people reached and, uh, and response uh, as, as good as it can possibly be. So those two factors go into helping us 
make a selection process of who who gets into the co-op program. So we could have a producer that sold all the co-ops out, which made it look very, very popular, and that is a, a sign that tells us or tells uh, your research team that that's doing very well on its own, and the state could put in additional resources to a publication that is much more expensive to help others be able to co-op with us. Right, so if, you know, there, it's a balance again. So if we see that there's uh, a, a lot of participation and it's at a price point that people could afford, whether Nebraska Tourism was involved in helping to underwrite it or not, uh, we may suggest that that is still a good publication or is still a good opportunity, but it may free up monies for us to explore other uh, publications or, or media types to uh, be able to offer co-op advertising and give people an opportunity to maybe get into something a little bit different. Great, thanks for that explanation. And I just want to make sure that I share with everybody that we will have a Q&A session at the end of today's webinar, as we always do. And today you're sending your questions in to Angela White, and that email address is right here on the board. As always, it's Angela.White at Nebraska.gov. Again, Angela.White at Nebraska.gov. So moving on. Okay. So then we have uh, additional opportunities of advertising with uh, the Nebraska Tourism Commission. And again, this uh, media kit is available on the website. And the first one is uh, really on electronic advertising and we have uh, opportunities that uh, are on the website. And uh, we have uh, premium listings, we have banner ads, we have a lot of different opportunities that are outlined in this deck. Uh, that people can can take a look at and and uh, they are all uh, uh, maximized for uh, various platforms so it's a uh, design that will uh, uh, your, to, to ensure that your message is uh, very very uh, presentable and uh, and maximized for anything from a desktop to a tablet to a mobile device uh, like a smartphone so, Rich, we recently returned from DMAI, which is Destination Marketing um, International Association, regarding different trends in marketing. And there really is not one right or wrong way to do it. And from the survey results we just did for the strategic planning process, we know that there are members of our industry out there that allocate zero dollars for marketing from 1% to 75% of their budget towards marketing. So really it's about finding a balance between print and web and any other thoughts that you have there that we just recently learned about. Right, and that's a, it's a good point. I mean, we, we spend a lot of time talking uh, within our team and with, with staff mm -hmm. about reaching a, a very integrated approach. And what that means is that, uh, in my mind, uh, there is no one thing that should drive all advertising. So it shouldn't be all traditional media, which is out of home or, or billboards, mm -hmm. television, radio, print, uh, collateral materials, uh, printed materials and such. And, and it also shouldn't be all digital, uh, meaning uh, online, web, social media, uh, streaming, rich media, and, and those kinds of opportunities. It should be uh, integrated. And, and there are good, very good things and proven things uh, with both traditional media and digital media opportunities. And so what we try and do is to reach a, a, a balance, and sometimes that balance is uh, weighted on traditional, and sometimes the balance is weighted on digital. Uh, depending on the audience and who it is that we're trying to reach, we want to look at media consumption. How do they make decisions for travel and visiting places to make sure that, that we're speaking uh, not only their language, but we're speaking to them in a way that they want to receive the information. So we're starting out today with some pieces that you may find a little bit more above your budget or uh, areas that you have not gone into, but we're also going to discuss some options and opportunities that are, if not free to very, very low cost, that in, the cost that involves is your time which that's never free either. So we'll keep moving on, but I want to make sure that we are understanding that we're all about different levels of marketing here that everybody can participate in. Right, and you know, the other thing we look at is we look at connectivity. So mm -hmm. especially in digital, if we have an opportunity where we can connect a potential uh, visitor, a uh, traveler, a tourist, to a specific destination, we want to try and do that, and, and we can do it immediately 
uh, especially with the digital opportunities that we have. And to your point, many of these, so many of these are very, very affordable uh, when considering if you were to try and have uh, a similar traditional approach to reach as many eyes or as dis uh, decision makers. Mm -hmm. um, it would be uh, uh, not cost prohibitive, but it would be a lot more money and it may not be as targeted. So uh, the, the electronic advertising uh, or digital advertising opportunities are uh, really uh, great and, and uh, you, you can see them as part of this media kit. Uh, there are uh, production requirements in terms of uh, the kinds of uh, uh, ads and, and spaces and, and placements that you can have. Uh, and we have those available uh, for uh, people to view and, and, uh, and take a look at uh, as part of that media kit. So part of what uh, we also have is we have, and again, this is that integrated approach, we have um, uh, opportunities within uh, the Nebraska Tourism Guides. And uh, one of the things that came out of the research from the 2012 strategic planning process that the commission went through was a, uh, almost a challenge, I think, from the researchers or the, the strategists uh, from uh, the company that was hired to come in and take a very objective look at, at everything that, that uh, Nebraska Tourism was doing was to continue to evolve and uh, make uh, the travel guide better and to keep up with uh, trends and to keep up with uh, the changing dynamics of how people are making decisions in, in their, uh, uh, in their uh, tourism and, and visitation selection process. And so one of the things that we uh, enacted this year uh, to uh, try out, again, as, a, uh, as an opportunity to, uh, to make better was to uh, propose two different guides. And I say two different guides, uh, but they are uh, a spring and summer guide for 2016 and then a fall and winter guide. And uh, one of the things that, uh, that we learned from our partner uh, at Meredith uh, Corporation, which is uh, uh, also the publishers of many uh, great magazines like Better Homes and Gardens and, and uh, Midwest Living, and they've been good partners, I think, for Nebraska Tourism Commission in the past, is that uh, forward-thinking commissions are looking at not just relegating uh, their content just to one guy to try and carry an entire year, but splitting it up right. seasonally so that uh, there may be destinations and attractions and events that uh, are just happening in the fall and the winter um, and they may be, uh, I don't want to say forgotten, but they may not be as top of mind right. if they are in a guide that is trying to carry the entire year. So that was some of the thinking behind that and uh, you had mentioned earlier that uh, uh, we really want people to claim their destination on the website uh, because we have to have that information so that we can include uh, your destination in the listings uh, and the, uh, uh, the destination uh, call-outs that we have uh, within the guide itself and that uh, uh, deadline is today and I think uh, that's been out for a couple of months now Yes. Uh, to let folks know and, and, uh, and Dan Cooper from our team will lead a, uh, uh, a brief uh, uh, overview and, and kind of a tutorial uh, very visually uh, on how people can do that and just how easy it is. And I think it's important to remember that as we go through a new um, strategic planning session that the travel guide and how that all um, evolves and what it all encompasses will be ever changing because of trends and national markets and how and cost and how that all looks. So um, we are uh, interested in, in having input to see how we can constantly evolve. However, honestly, this year would be the cheapest year to purchase any ad space in the travel guide because if you have an ad in the spring and summer, you automatically get that same ad in the fall and winter. Exactly. And really one of the cool things too is that uh, not only do you get an ad in both guides, mm -hmm. but you can change your message from spring, summer to fall, winter. So you don't have to run the same exact ad uh, in both guides. You can, uh, you'll have the same space, but uh, you can change up your message, which I think offers 
as an advertiser, uh, that kind of flexibility is is really, really uh, good. It's yeah. a good thing. Excited for that. So great information there. Uh, Nebraska Nice Destination Radio. Uh, jump in here, Rich, but I'm going to go over a couple points that we talked about here. This is a new project for us to get a national audience. We have the opportunity to do this show. It airs on Saturdays from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. Central Standard Time on Sirius XM Destination Radio channel number 80. We have a uh, welcome programming content suggestions that we'll take from members of the industry and our fellow stakeholders. And there's also an opportunity here to purchase a 30 second commercial uh, for each show. So if you want to be part of a show that we've done or have one coming up that helps promote something uniquely in your area or for your business, please consider that as, a, as an option. Some of the shows that we've recently done that you are have available that are out there is we focused on the College World Series. We also did a show on Divot's summer concert series. We did a show on Fort Robinson State Park and also tanking in the Sand Hills. The Lincoln Children's Zoo 50th anniversary will be a show coming up here. We're doing a show featuring Lake Mack as well as Homestead National Monument. The Nebraska State Fair is always very popular. We'll be doing a lot with that as well as the Scotts Bluff Balloon Festival. So there's a lot of different opportunities there that as you as an advertiser, if you're an outfitter or if you're a hotelier that can help advertise and have your 30 second spot put in there and you can reach out to Bailey Lowerman if you're interested in that or Angela White. Again we'll take questions later and all emails go to Angela.White at Nebraska.gov. You know I think one of the really neat things about this show is that it's hosted by a Nebraskan Patrick Combs who is probably familiar to a lot of people that may be uh, listening to uh, this uh, this program. He's also the voice of uh, uh, the Nebraska Cornhuskers in mm -hmm. Memorial Stadium. So it'll be a very familiar voice to a lot of folks. But Patrick and uh, an associate of his uh, from Chicago, who is a travel writer and and uh, commentator, hosts the show every Saturday, like you've said, and and uh, it's really really engaging. And I think it's a, a very very uh, nice. Um, uh, platform for us to tell stories and really delve into specifics of destinations and events within the state. It's truly an opportunity for a local attraction or an event or something that's you know part of our DNA as the College World Series to really let the listener know more about what we have and get a glimpse through that listening skill set that makes you feel like you're there and you want to know a little bit more about it. And we always direct them to visit Nebraska.com and that way we have a full package that we're promoting. So we're very excited about this. It's been very well received by those who have participated in the format. They really like the interviewing process and it's very well done. So we would encourage you to check that out. Great. So volunteer opportunities. Volunteer for opportunities. Events. There we go. This is um, going to be focusing on if you have that zero budget, that there is ways for you to, to promote your attraction or your business. And one of those is at the Nebraska State Fair. And the Nebraska State Fair runs through August 28th to September 7th. It's a little late this year. And it's always in Grand Island. Wonderful facility. They do a top-notch job there. And you can participate in the Nebraska Tourism Commission's booth. We have really, not a booth, we have a quadrant. We like have a, a room. room. Yeah. We have a room. So uh, Karen Collars is the one who coordinates that. So if you would like to come volunteer and promote your area, you're welcome to do so, as well as promoting the state of Nebraska. The other one, if August is not your um, month, per se, because it's very busy, uh, in January of 2016, the 9th through the 24th, we will be at the National Western Stock Show, which has proven to do very well for us in the past three or four years. And that is in Denver. Of course, it is all up to you to get there to these places and participate, but it is volunteer. And Karen Collars at karen.collars at nebraska.gov is the key coordinator for these two events. And these, again, are free. It's just getting yourself there and volunteering your time. Now we're going to go into how to participate in Nebraska Tourism Commission's First Friday activities. And I would like to have Lisa come up and introduce herself. Lisa, welcome. Thank you. I'm Lisa Carnetz, and I'm the new um, small business and entrepreneur consultant for tourism. And this is going to be one of my first activities that, we, that will take place this Friday. And we'd like to share a little bit about it with you. 
The first Friday is a two-hour Friday afternoon event hosted by Nebraska Tourism Commission. And this first Friday is our first Friday, August 7th. And we're going to do this every month at the State Office Building in Lincoln. We've promoted it at the Capitol and at several other State Office Buildings. Lisa's got our easel sign right here. We're going to hold that up. Hopefully you can see that. It's nicely, brightly colored. These are placed around the State Office Buildings where there's, you know, really more than 18,000 people that work. So it's a great opportunity for people to come to this event from 3 to 5 p.m on the first Friday of every month and sample some of state's great products. Yeah, I'd like to share a little bit about some of our vendors. We have about eight to 10 vendors. We'd like to set up a table in our conference room. It's right beside the east entry on the Nebraska State Building office. We're on the first floor if you've never been here and this is a great additional zero budget because it's free that you could come and participate and if you would like to our next slide will have my email ad address on it where you can get a hold of me but um, we have I think our first one has three passport vendors participating which is really exciting we are going to have a band outside under the deck the lobby area and it is called they're called wild woods they're bluegrass we're hoping to do this every first Friday of the month and so I think this time we have some art we have destination vendors, we have food vendors, possibly a produce vendor, and so we're very excited to try this out, and it's a great way to promote your business product, whatever, to new target market for you, and so we're happy to share in this adventure. We're really excited to reach out for this. And on another note, we uh, if you're interested in participating or having your product there, uh, we're going to have you reach out to Lisa. And that information is available right here. Yes. And so I'll look forward to your emails, and I would love to meet you. Um, the other part, if you're a small business and you um, need some, just any direction, guidance, resource, connecting, networking. Um, I'm your go-to girl, so I'd be happy to visit with you. Well, we're excited if you're um, unable to be a vendor, but you're in the area, please stop in to our first Friday. And we hope to be able to promote a lot of uh, our agri ecotourism, so our outfitters, our farmer's market um, participants and vendors, and also uh, locally, local musicians, local activities. So we're very excited for this and we, we hope we do well. So at this time, we'd like to welcome Amanda Barker because we want to talk about the Nebraska Passport Stops for 2016 and also how it's going so far in 2015. So so, yes. Amanda. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm excited to talk to you a little bit about the Nebraska Passport Program. Uh, we're currently underway in th with the 2015 program, 80 stops as per usual, and loving it. But if we're going to think about looking ahead for 2016, um, we're looking for some 80 of Nebraska's best sites, foods, organizations, or experiences for travelers to experience in 2016. Um, the ultimate goal is to get Nebraskans and out-of-state travelers out of their corner of the world and exploring Nebraska and, and all of Nebraska. So uh, the last several weeks I've been traveling to these 80 passport stops and hearing not one bad thing said about the program. I've really enjoyed that positive uh, outlook on the program. So a couple of things from passport stops of this year. Todd Baker at Baker's Candy said everything is working great and we are most definitely appreciative of the opportunity to work with this program. Uh, Kathy at the Petrified Wood Gallery said that it's definitely bringing new visitors in their door, which is uh, just about one thing everyone wants to have is new visitors. And of course, Rose at Carnegie Art Center and Alliance said that it's been fun seeing folks from all over the state. And that's been one of the themes I've heard largely is that people in western Nebraska are seeing people from the eastern half and it's really connecting um, our state as a whole, which is great. And Todd with Baker's Chocolates, that's one of our top attractions this that's year. Everybody loves a good chocolate and Baker's is fantastic. Absolutely. So they've really, uh, they've really done well. We love to see the stops do well, mm -hmm. take, um, take advantage of the opportunity. In order to participate, there's a couple requirements, mm -hmm. which the, applica the application's on our website, mm -hmm. but most importantly, we want the stops to utilize what we're doing on our end to market the program and all of your efforts, Amanda. Uh, one of those items is, is that there is two stamps to stamp the booklets mm -hmm. that has always been the only cost involved for the stops in the past. Okay. Each stamp costs $50 and if you have a hardship clause you can write that into us and we can talk to you about that. But that is the only cost per site or location to participate. That's a very, very low marketing opportunity. <laughs> At the most would be $100. Uh, in most cases uh, staffing has increased by 150% 
content mm -hmm. and revenues sometimes that have been seen uh, from a, a May from 2014 to a business for May 2015 are up to anywhere between 90 to 200 percent increase so staffing they hire more people so it's a really really great program for a lot of those involved and here's some other great facts yep absolutely you can see that near each year nearly 19,000 plus participants participate so that's that's a lot of numbers traveling across the state and coming into your in your doors uh, we also see travelers from out of state so 10 plus states there um, in 2015 alone already in the first couple of months of the program there have been several seven travelers that have already completed all 80 stops so people take this seriously they love seeing every place on the tour um, and there's no there's no skip in there so I can hardly believe that number I know that blew me crazy. away just recently seven crazy. seven travelers have already completed all 80 stops and right. we're just hitting the first part of August there's still two months left Absolutely. so these are logistic traveling wizards mm -hmm. because they are picking them up and putting it down and they are going that's right and, and they are <laughs> loving our state and they're sharing all that enthusiasm and energy back with us which makes us glow and at the same time more importantly they're appreciating Appreciating what Nebraska's product is and fellow Nebraskans. There's a few things that we require for you to be a passport uh, stop in 2016. Uh, so your attraction or business or organization must do uh, four things. One, you do have to be open regular and reasonable hours, including at least one weekend day. Um, and that's largely for the population of travelers who aren't going to be able to get out Monday through Friday. Um, they're going to need to be able to visit you on a Saturday or a Sunday. And, and having those reasonable hours just encourages travelers to come visit your spot and, and without being disillusioned or disappointed by a closed door or a closed sign. Uh, we also require that your site be staffed by a friendly person, um, which isn't hard because you're in Nebraska and you're all nice. But um, being able to staff and, and enthusiastically kind of uh, portray your business or your site is really important. Um, and also to share information about surrounding areas because not often or oftentimes a uh, passport traveler will stop at the site, but also take in the surrounding community. So you want to be an ambassador for your community as well. Thirdly, you have to positively promote the passport program. Not hard to do, uh, but simply display a, a poster or something like that or passports uh, throughout your physical site would be really great. And then finally, we ask that you abide by Nebraska state law, uh, which prohibits charging participants a fee of any sort for stamps. So as you can see, many, many tourists will naturally invest money in things that they wish to see, buy or experience, but our state laws prevent us from forcing passport participants to pay for a stamp at, at each stop. Well, and Lisa, you would probably share with us here in this discussion as well, Amanda, is that the most expensive thing for a business to do is engage that consumer mm -hmm. for the very first time. That's the most hardest and difficult way to mm -hmm. get them in your doors. And this program does that. Yeah. So you're right. It could be disappointing that they're not spending hundreds of dollars at your, uh, your facility. But they walk away with a positive experience. Mm -hmm. They share that with not only their family members they're traveling with, but on social media. And before you know it, they're thinking, we didn't have time but I want to go back and therefore you've got a place in their mind and potentially in their future travel itinerary mm -hmm. so it's very important to get that visitor right. through the very first time I think it's a great way um, if you are even like a destination to have a repeat customer absolutely and so that just speaks right to that case great so just mark your calendar uh, right now. The applications for the 2016 Passport Program to be a site there will be released on October 1st, this, later this fall, and they will be due uh, in December-ish. So um, we will be announcing that via the NEB Tour Listserv, and we will also post it on NebraskaPassport.com, which is the passport-specific site, and the VisitNebraska.com website as well. Um, for whatever reason, if it's not distributed to you, although we'll try and distribute very widely, uh, we will just go ahead and give me an email at amanda.barker at nebraska.gov with any questions or if you need uh, an extra application. There will be applications available at our travel conference yes. in the fall, Absolutely. and that is October 20th through the 22nd. And if, if I could just do a shout out for our fall conference, it's going to be fabulous in Columbus. We have national speakers who are amazing that we are so excited to share with you and so if you do have a little bit of marketing budget I think it'd be well worth your time to come to the conference network learn how others are doing it with with shoestring budgets as well as
let's look what others are doing in partnerships when you do your co-ops and get to know each other and utilize your resources better. So that fall conference is going to be, wow, it's going to be amazing in Columbus, the power of nice. Yes. And we look forward to seeing you all or as many as you can be there, be there. At this point, we would like to have Dan come up, and we're going to exit, and we're going to have Dan walk through claiming your destination on the website. And again, today's the deadline for that, August 3rd, so that you can make it into the 2016 Travel Guide listings. Dan. Fabulous. Thank you so much, Kathy. Yes, as Kathy uh, said, basically I'm going to give you a quick walkthrough of how to sign up for the website, how to log in, and how to claim your destination. It's very simple, very easy, <clears throat> and we created this new step-by-step -step guide with illustrations and screenshots to make it very easy uh, for everybody to complete this process. And uh, the same thing that we're showing here is available on our website as well. If you go to visitnebraska.com and click on the help button, we added a new FAQ that has a link to this uh, document so you can look it up by yourself as well, in addition to me walking through it today. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about is how to sign up. So when you go to visitnebraska.com, uh, we'd recommend using Chrome, Firefox, or Safari. All you need to do is click the little sign up button in the top right. And you'll see on this screen, I've kind of highlighted where that is with the red uh, circle. So you click the sign up button in the top right, and then we recommend signing up with email. So again, click the sign up link in the top right corner, then click sign up with email. Basically, uh, this is going to continue through the sign up process. If you've already signed up, you can uh, join us back again when we go through the, uh, the logging in process. So again, click, uh, go to visitnebraska.com, click the sign up button, and then click sign up with email. So when you click sign up with email, you'll get this first form and you have your first name, your last name, your email, and then you'll create a password. We definitely recommend using an email uh, from your destination's website if you have one. So jchapo at lincolnzoo.org, something like that that has um, your website in it if possible. And that will just help us verify your information uh, when you claim ownership of your destination. Uh, on the next screen, you can fill out some of your interests if you'd like. You can choose to be part of our mailing list. You can update your information of where you're from, and then you click, basically you'll click create account. Now once you've created your account, you'll get an email at the uh, email address you use to register. And in that email, all you need to do is click the confirm my account link. And you won't be able to log in into the website until you click this uh, link. So make sure that you check your email. And if you don't see your email, check your junk mail or your spam folder, and then click the confirm my account. And once you click that account, uh, excuse me, once you click that link, You'll go to the website and you'll be logged in. So now that you've created your account, we'll talk about how you log in. So again, go to visitnebraska.com, click the login link in the top right, and then you'll get a form uh, that says uh, your email and password. So fill out that information with the same information you registered for, and then click sign in. Super easy. So now that you've logged up, logged in and signed up, um, we'll basically show you how to find your destination on the website. So we've implemented this functionality called Quick Search, and through this Quick Search functionality, you'll be able to search the website for your destination. And when I say the word destination, I'm talking about anything you can see and do, any place you can stay at, or any place you can eat at in Nebraska. So you can use this Quick Search functionality to find your destination on the website. So type in the name of your destination, and then click the Go button, and this will search the site for your destination. So in this example, I search for Lincoln Children's Zoo and I click the Go button. And you'll see right away, I have a search result that says Lincoln Children's Zoo. But you'll also see right above that, I have tabs for see and do, stay, and events. And basically what this search functionality does is search across the whole site through all the things to see and do, all the places to stay, all the places to eat, and all the events for your term. And so if you search for Lincoln Children's Zoo, you'll get see and do, but you also get things related to that um, in other categories. So uh, basically, you search the site, click the go button, and then click your destination listing card. So once you get to that page, you'll see the name of your destination, um, several pieces of information, a photo may already be there, a description, stuff like that, but you'll see that there's a button that says, is this your business? And if the destination has not yet been claimed, you'll see this button, and that's going to be uh, most likely if you haven't claimed your destination yet. So once you've found your destination, just click that is this your business button, you'll get a little uh, confirmation notification that says, are you certain? And basically, this says to Nebraska Tourism, if you click yes, you're requesting ownership of this destination. And that means you'll be able to go onto the website and update your description, update your tags, update your location, your contact information, your hours, your photo, everything like that. But you'll make sure that you need to click yes 
so that you can send that request to Nebraska Tourism. And once you send that request, Nebraska Tourism will look through that request, verify that you actually are the owner of that destination, and then send you an uh, email notification letting you know that. So again, you can follow through all of this um, exactly uh, like what's on the website as well. And you can click the Help button and click the first uh, FAQ to get a step-by-step -step guide through this as well. So now that you've signed up, logged in, found your destination, and have claimed it, now we can talk about updating your destination. So once you've logged into the website, you'll see your name in the top right corner. And I kind of highlighted it in red in this example. So again, log in, sign up, and click your name in the top right. This will take you to your account uh, portion. And there's lots of things like a dashboard, manage destinations, manage events, manage trips, and account settings. So again, sign up and log in, click your name in the top right, and then click Manage Destinations, and this will take you to a panel that shows you every destination that you've claimed and you've been awarded ownership of. Now all you have to do to update your information is click the Edit button in that destination. So in this example, again, I've signed up, I've logged in, I click my name, click Manage Destinations, and then click Edit for the destination I want to edit. And on this form field, basically there's lots of different uh, informations that you can fill out. So there's um, the name of the destination, the address, the hours, what your photo is going to be, uh, what your email address is, what your website URL is. It even has links for your Facebook URL, your Twitter URL, or your YouTube URL. So it's very easy to update this information, and you can update it instantaneously. So once you've added all the information you want to update, just click the Publish button, and right away that new information will go onto the website so everybody who's browsing the website will see uh, that update information. That's really a great benefit to all of you because it lets you keep everything up to date. So if you change your phone number, you don't have to wait for it to get updated. You can update it yourself right away. So it's super handy. Um, and again, this will push out automatically right away to everybody viewing the website so they can see this information right away. So again, that's just a quick walkthrough of how to sign up, how to log in, how to claim your destination, and how to update your information. And again, if you want to find that uh, this exact document, just go to visitnebraska.com, click Help, and then click the first question. And there will be a link right there to this PDF that will show you step by step how to do all these things. So now I'd like to welcome back everybody for our question and answer session. Thanks, Dan. And this is the opportunity that you have now <coughs> to send in any questions to us. And the email address to send them to is Angela dot white at nebraska dot gov. Angela, do we have any questions today? Yes, we have a few. Um, one of the questions is about the website and they're saying that they're having difficulty that once they've claimed their site that then going back and finding where they need to go to update the information, they're just having difficulty finding that. Can you walk back through really quickly how they go back in later to make updates? Definitely. Thanks, Angela. That question was they're having difficulty going back and changing their information once they've claimed it. Mm -hmm. Okay, exactly. I want to make sure we're repeating the questions so we're all on board here. Definitely, so that's super simple. So that, again, how to update your information once you've claimed your destination and once you've gotten that email notification from Nebraska Tourism that your destination claim has been approved. So again, go to visitnebraska.com and log in. And once you've logged in, you'll see in the top right corner where I've highlighted in this red circle that your name will be there. Just click your name and you'll go to basically this uh, panel that lets you adjust all the settings. You can change your own information and you can manage all your uh, destinations as well. So log in, click your name, and then click the Manage Destinations panel. And you'll see I've highlighted it right here in red. Once you click that tab, every destination that you've been awarded ownership of will show right here. So in this example, I've been awarded the Gene Leahy Mall. I can click the Edit button and then I'll go to this page that has the name of the destination, the address, the contact information, the hours, the photo, all that stuff that you can easily update and just click the publish button. So I'll walk you through that one more time. So basically, go to visitnebraska.com, log in by clicking the login button in the top right. Once you've logged in, you'll see that your name now appears in the top right. Click your name. On that uh, web page that loads, click manage destinations then click the edit button under the destination that you want to update. And again, you'll have all this information that you can change whenever you'd like. Click the publish button and this will go directly to everybody on the website to see all the updated information that you have. Thanks, Dan. You know, I'm a little bit of a blend of an old school trying to catch up with new school approaches here. So um, for everybody else out there, maybe it's helpful to say that on our website, we have screenshots that we've just done and a PDF 
So you can have either way, if listening and going through the webinar isn't necessarily the way that you digest information the best, please tell them where they can find the PDF and the screenshots of how to walk through the destination. Exactly. So everything that I just showed you is in, in its entirety on the website. So go to visitnebraska.com, click the help button that's in the top right, and then the first question on that page says, where can I find a step-by-step -step walkthrough of how to sign up, log in, claim my destination, and update my information? Mm -hmm. Just click that and you'll have a PDF that you can view that has all these screenshots along with these descriptions written for each thing. So exactly the same thing we talked about here in step-by-step -step format so you can kind of go along at your own pace and follow uh, in a couple different windows. So very easy to use. Again, go to visitnebraska.com, click the help button, then click the first question on that page and there'll be a link right there to the PDF that you can view. Not only going along at your own pace, which mine was probably much slower than yours, <laughs> it would also be helpful that maybe uh, it's a busy time of the day and you won't be able to get to it till exactly. much later in the evening or you're an early bird riser and you want to do it first thing in the morning. This allows you the time to go through it and think <laughs> about what you're posting because this is an incredible opportunity to utilize and it's been very well received by the travelers, the visitors. So exactly. uh, lots of different steps and as always, Dan is a wonderful resource, so please don't hesitate to reach out to Dan, to Bailey Lowerman, to Angela White, to our team uh, for additional things because we want you and your business and your attraction to be successful and to utilize the site. And the great thing is that this is all free. Like this right. doesn't require any commitment other than just a couple minutes to claim it and update the information. So yeah. very simple and a very effective way to get your messaging out to potential visitors. That's right. So another question, Angela. Do we have one? Mm -hmm. um, it's about the Nebraska radio show, mm -hmm. Nebraska Nice Radio Show. What is the listenership to the Sirius program? That's a great question. We'd have to go back and look into the demographics. The question is, what is the listenership for the Nebraska Nice Radio Show? Uh, Rich, I know that that's part of Sirius XM, and what they're going to do is a national potential listenership. Right. So if you're familiar with the platform of Sirius XM Satellite Radio, the potential listenership is global. <laughs> so it's everybody everywhere. So it can reach not just people in the state of Nebraska or uh, in the United States or North America, but travelers that are international as well and wanting to find out more information about, um, you know, uh, our part of the world and what is unique and what's, uh, what's fun. And what we have to offer is very favorable, especially to uh, in an international traveler. Uh, it is potentially, and with their subscriber base, it's millions of uh, subscribers uh, that could tune in. Uh, they do uh, an analysis and a listenership uh, tracking studies, I believe, uh, yearly. And so um, I don't, we don't have those uh, figures yeah. right now, uh, but I know that, uh, that they'll, they'll have those at some point. Um, but this is a, uh, I think, a tremendous opportunity to kind of, you know, if the world is your oyster and you want to reach the world, this is one, again, it's one thing that we can do. It's not, a, it's not the only thing, the silver bullet for all marketing, uh, but it's another option. And, uh, and I'm really, really excited that uh, uh, we're doing this. In fact, I think Nebraska Tourism is the first uh, that I know of uh, to explore this uh, platform of, of Sirius XM Satellite Radio with a show dedicated uh, to this purpose. Right, uh, and, and we are. And one of the things to kind of keep um, uh, in mind is that this piece is uh, promoted with the Miles Company Incorporation. You may know of them with a lot of public relations and efforts. They're out there doing the marketing as well as it's associated with Rural Radio Network. So there's another areas that you can get that, but I'm just excited to see those numbers too. We're just in that glimpse of a phase. We could certainly provide any type of reach, um, but before to see what's really happening, we won't know that for a couple more months, but please feel free to reach back out to us or reach out to Angela. And we'll be sharing those at commission meetings as well as the annual conference coming up October uh, 20th through the 22nd in Columbus. Yeah. Great question, Angela. So there um, another question on the radio show also. The cost is $1,000 for a commercial. How many programs will have my 30-second ad? Well, you, it's, it's one 30-second commercial per program. So uh, let's say this coming Saturday, if you want to have uh, a, uh, uh, a commercial within the program, 
uh, you can buy one mm -hmm. uh, for a thousand dollars again for that global uh, reach uh, you can buy if you want the entire show so for example if uh, and I'm not suggesting that the Nebraska State Fair do this, but if the Nebraska State Fair <laughs> wanted to dominate the entire hour with just messaging about Nebraska State Fair in terms of commercial, uh, they could buy all uh, five of the 30-second commercials, and, uh, and they would literally own an hour on uh, Channel 80 on Sirius XM satellite radio. Right. Uh, Nebraska Tourism Commission as the host and the provider of the show, always receives a front end and a back end, which means a beginning and an ending spot, which we promote our visitnebraska.com site. Um, also during this, we also have had corporate sponsors step up and utilize the opportunity as well. So it's been a really interesting mix of the university as well as corporate Nebraska um, having those 30 second spots as well throughout shows. Yes. So good question. Angela, any more for today? Yep, the last question, and this is also on the radio show, is how are we promoting listenership to the program? That's a great question. The question is how are we promoting listenership to the program? That's the Miles Company and Destination Radio. That's how they get their information out on a national push. Recently, Destination Radio and the Miles Corporation were in Austin at the National Destination Marketing Association International Annuals Conference, where there was more than 2,200 attendees listening about other opportunities like this. How we get it out is through Neb Tour, it's through this webinar, it's through commission meetings, and it'll be talked about at, again, the annual conference October 20th through the 22nd in Columbus. So, Rich, do you want to add anything to that comment? Well, the only thing that I would add is that um, Sirius XM, one good thing that they really, really do well is they cross-promote uh, mm -hmm. uh, via all different channels. So, if you're a fan of... Um, uh, 70s on 7, for example, you may hear a promotion for the Nebraska NICE uh, radio program uh, during a break that they have on 70s on 7. So, uh, and then on the uh, Channel 80, the destination radio, you may hear a, uh, uh, a promotion for the Sinatra channel. Uh, and so it's just, it, they do a really good job, I think, of cross-pollinating uh, around all their channels. And uh, they, they do uh, they do that really really well. Who wouldn't love seventies at seven? I would. I, I would. Um, yes. <laughs> no complaints here. No. But more importantly, I'd rather listen to uh, Destination, you know, Nebraska Nice yeah. show first. Angela. Okay, we did have another one come in. They're asking about um, the deadline for the website today and for the travel guide as far as claiming destinations. And they said, uh, will it be a guarantee that it will be in the Nebraska travel guide? Um, or is it just guaranteed that we'll be on the website? No, uh, that's a great question. The question is, if they claim their destination by today, is that a guarantee that they'll be in the listings component of the Nebraska Travel Guide? And that is a yes. That is the requirement. Yeah. In order to be listed in the listings section of the 2016 spring and summer, fall and winter, both, you must have claimed your destination on the website so and that deadline is today because the deadlines not only are our own it's a deadline with our publisher so we need to stay in task and move it out um, for many of you this doesn't happen overnight it takes about 10 months for every travel guide as we back out the calendar and get it all going but rich why don't you speak more to that well it's uh, it's a matter of you know we pull the information from the the website to populate the listings right. uh, in the travel guide and we want to make sure that we have the most current and up-to-date information uh, on those destination sites. And, and so uh, that's why it's critical that we have all of that, uh, not just claimed, but as uh, up-to-date as, as possible. And use, using the opportunity to have very engaging um, populated uh, sites for your business or attraction right. on there. This is not anything new. This deadline didn't come up overnight. This deadline's been out there for at least six weeks and claiming and promoting the claiming of your destination and attraction was first started in October of 2014. So it's it's been a while coming. <laughs> it's just that we want to make sure that we reiterate it over and over that today is the deadline. You can claim your destination whenever you want, but today is the deadline if you're going to want your listing in that section for the 2016 guides. Yes. Okay, Dan, do you have anything you want to say on that note? 
Uh, if you have any questions, we've listed out a whole bunch of frequently asked questions in our help mm -hmm. section. So uh, in addition to this guide that we kind of walk you through today with the screenshots, we also have answers and questions that, that we've gotten uh, commonly from people. And you can always reach out to the Nebraska Tourism uh, team for uh, any questions that you may have as well. And uh, I can even help out with those kinds of things as well. So make sure that you uh, send those to the contact uh, information on the website. and. Uh, any member of the team will make sure that you get uh, help and get everything you need to get started. Absolutely. And not only will Dan help, but we will all jump in and help. But I think that we should re, uh, re suggest and encourage the PDFs and the screenshots because you mentioned that you wanted that as an industry and as stakeholders. We created it. That was just discussed at the strategic planning session. We crafted it. So it's there because uh, everybody learns differently. And so whether you're not comfortable with a webinar approach, we have it in a PDF and in the other uh, tutorial format. Definitely. And we do have some additional videos on YouTube from previous webinars that were right. entirely dedicated to the website that kind of feature me on the actual website navigating around. So uh, in addition to the screenshot PDF that we added to the website, we have those videos that you can look at as well if you want another uh, way to kind of learn that way additionally. Yeah, and if you have a, a staff or several people, you might want to ask around and say, did you claim this? Did you claim this? We just came upon a site last week that thought somebody else had claimed it. It was like, whoo! It hadn't been claimed at all. And then they said, this is so slick, this is so easy. So just ask your coworkers or ask your marketing manager or ask yourself if you're all three of the above or you know, make sure you take some time to claim it. Angela, another question before we wrap up? Yep, um, so I've got someone who's trying to sign up uh, for the website to claim their destination on an iPhone, but it's only letting them sign up using Facebook. There's no email option available, they're saying. Definitely. So the question is that they're trying to sign up uh, through an iPhone. We definitely recommend if you're going to be claiming destinations and updating it that you do it on a desktop just because the experiences uh, for those kinds of things are a lot more input intensive, which isn't very good on an iPhone. Um, so if you can, try to use a desktop to claim that. Um, and we'll keep on looking into things as well. But definitely the recommendation would be at least an iPad or something with a bigger screen that makes it easier for you to input that kind of information. In. Some of that have to do with your server or your provider. And depending on what your mobile device is could have an effect or an impact on that as well. Uh, if you don't, you only have the iPhone, you could you know, hopefully connect with your local library or possibly your local um, chamber or your local CVB and they could help you get on a, a desktop as well. But Definitely. that is the best advice because you're going in between services as well. Angela? That's all we can. That's it for the questions today. All right. Well, once again, if you have any other additional questions we can try to answer, it will be Angela.White at Nebraska.gov. Over by Rich is the sign of announcing our first Friday's events that's going to start this uh, this Friday, August the 7th, and then, thank you, Rich, and then on September 2nd, that's our next commission update webinar. That's our quarterly commission updates about what the commission's um, doing and sharing information and communicating. And September 14th, due to the Labor Day holiday, will be our next educational webinar, focusing on amateur sporting events and the impact they have. And so again, September 2nd is a commission quarterly update. September 14th is an educational webinar. Both of these will happen at 2 p.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, I'm Kathy McKillop. Thank you so much for joining us today. I know your time is important and it is precious, so we appreciate you sharing that with us. I want to thank everyone for joining us and for participating in this webinar. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day.